Hey guys, Wally Renee here. I'm gonna go over how to best scan uh, scan bodies. So um, in Remexis, you take the initial scan and then you delete the soft tissue. And when you start to scan your scan body, start scanning on um, some common data like that premolar. And notice how I started scanning on the facial where the scan bodies connect to the tissue. And the reason why I do this is to avoid automatic delete of the scan bodies using um, the artificial intelligence algorithm of the active delete, which might confuse it with a tongue or a cheek um, if it's not connected to the actual tissue um, like that. So now I, I turned on active delete and you can see it deleted everything else, kept the scan bodies, it deleted the cheeks, uh, lip, and tongue um, that I accidentally scanned in. and preserve the scan bodies. So once again, you have a few options and I'm gonna go through this slower in a minute so that we can talk about kind of how you do the whole process. Well, let's take a look and see how this model looks and exactly how much data you need to, to get of the scan body for it to be a good impression. Um, what you have to realize is that labs such as True Abutment are gonna use 3Shape or ExoCAD to virtually pin a STL file of that exact scan body to this model to determine the location of the implant in the bone and to do that they need adequate data to be able to merge those and um, the most important data points are those flat surfaces on the occlusal view here so let's take a look at the STL view and you can see we have really good crisp distinct scan body scans um, plenty of data to merge to the um, laboratory software file of that scan body. Okay, so let's let's slow down a little bit. Let's go ahead and actually do a whole case start to finish. So here's a different case. Um, the first thing that you do is unscrew your healing abutments um, and take a complete arch scan. I typically like to start scanning on the lingual of the maxillary like this uh, with the emerald or emerald S. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all of this data and cap capture the palette and everything like that. Now I'm gonna to start to get the buckle and, and very slowly rotating to the buckle at about a 45 degree angle here. Always keeping some of the lingual in view, okay? Splitting the difference there, super easy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capture the uh, more of a distinct facial uh, angle here. Almost, almost at a, like a 90 degree flat view rotating into the proximal contacts of those adjacent teeth, trying to capture all that proximal contact data, like that, rolling that there. And once again, I'm mostly facial here with this view. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is capture the um, straight facial. I'll roll really heavy here making sure I focus on those proximal contacts so that the lab has good surfaces to which to build the proposals to, um, whether you're milling them yourselves or having them mill it, doesn't matter, you still need really good scans. Filling in all this data here. Active delete is very strong on this version of the software 6.3, so sometimes it deletes good stuff. If you're having issues with active delete, you can just turn it off. Um, by hitting the bottom button while you're scanning. So let's go ahead and look at this model render and see exactly how crisp and clean this is and if it's a good adequate foundation to which we will then scan the scan bodies and everything like that. Um, you know, I will say that a lot of that scatter is gonna be cleaned up in the model render. Plymeca has really done a good job at uh, fine tuning the model renders. So let's go ahead and generate this model. It went through an initial global alignment, um, basically fine tuning any errors in the mesh that it detected from misaligned scans. And now it's gonna go ahead and um, go through an algorithm which is gonna automatically delete soft tissues and things like that to make a crisp and clean model. So there's our, our model that we're going to use as our soft tissue model. It's a very nice, clean, crisp scan. Took about a minute 44 for me on this particular patient. And let's look at the STL view. Very nice, very nice 3D image of that patient. I think that'll work just fine for us for the purposes of these uh, implants. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to scan the opposing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up. I like to capture the linguals and then uh, kind of a buckle 45 degree view and then fill in all the data. There we go. The opposing doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. The software does a good job at rendering the soft tissue away and making the model look beautiful. I think we're pretty good there. So now let's go ahead and go to our bytes. For this case, I'm going to do bilateral byte registrations at the same occlusal scheme, so maximum intercrustation here. Byte scans are slower scans, so you should slow down a little bit if you hear that ghost in. I struggle sometimes with bilateral bytes. Um, oftentimes I'm very easily able to get the first byte to ghost in. Um, but on the second byte, I typically find that one or two of the uh, arches do not ghost in and merge with the second byte scan. It's not a big deal. Sometimes uh, I'll go ahead and, and try to play with it a little bit. Other times I'll just stop like in this instance and I'm going to go ahead and manually pin that one byte. So to manually pin the byte, it's actually really easy. Okay, so it's clear that I'm not going to be able to get an automatic alignment of the mandibular arch onto that buckle byte number two. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and go to the little generate model icon. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my byte tab here. You see the red dot rather than a green dot. That's indicating that I did not get a good merge. So I'm just going to rotate and manipulate that lower model and then click a common point in each and let go. And you'll see that's going to snap right in and automatically start fine tuning those bilateral bytes. And that's the best way to get an accurate cross arch mount of, of these models is through the bilateral bytes. If you're doing just a single quadrant, you probably definitely don't need two bytes. Um, and also it's not wise to take two bytes at different occlusal schemes like one in MIP, one in CR, one closed, one open. All right, so now we're gonna go to the scan body tab and it asked me, do I wanna copy my uh, maxillary scan into the scan body tab? The answer is always yes. And what you need to then do is delete just a little extra of the soft tissue around the, the gingival scan of that implant site. So here I'm just using an eraser tool and going ahead and I'm deleting a little bit extra around there. <clears throat> and that's so that you can get a good stitch of that scan body in that site without it uh, having a previous scan interfere with that merge. And then this is the easiest part for sure. You're just gonna go ahead and pick up the um, scanner Screw in your scan bodies. In this case, use the appropriate scan body for that implant. I'm using a true abutment scan body here for this urus implant. And I like to once again scan, starting from the lingual or buccal, but usually at the soft tissue base where the scan body meets the tissue, not at the occlusal. Actually, in this case, it looks like it's an astro um, implant. So what we're gonna do here is fill in as much data as we can. Okay, and we're making sure that we recapitulate a little bit over the arch as we go to the other side. And all that data is going to be merged together with our soft tissue scan for the laboratory to be able to design proper emergence profile of these restorations. In a later video, I'll show you how to go ahead and um, design these yourself if you want to. And in ExoCAD, PlanCAD Premium, rotational based scanning, making sure to fill in as much of the scan body as you can. Once again, your gingival scan already captured the proximal contacts of the adjacent teeth, so you don't need to capture that. Okay, I think we're good here, so what we're going to do is go ahead and render this model. And you'll see a lot of that stuff's going to be cleaned up. They've done a really good job at at perfecting the model renders in this version of the software 6.3. Um, you'll see a very, very nice crisp and clean scan body scan model uh, integrated on top of the, basically the edentulous site for those uh, site number five and 12. So there we go. Very, very nice. 
It's everything that we need for this case to be able to send off. Let's turn off the soft tissue view, the color view, and look at the uh, raw STL view render of the stone model. Oftentimes the color could hide a multitude of sins. And so um, I always look at the, in the digital impressions in this stone view as well to make sure that everything looks crisp and clean. That looks pretty good. And I think we're ready to send to the laboratory our bytes articulated properly. We have the scan body scan, soft tissue scans, um, opposing, everything's mounted correctly. And so all you do is, you can't see it because I got my labels up there, but there's a little true abutment tab. If you don't have that visible, you could go to your administration tab and uh, make sure that that's visible on your Remexa software. Um, but there's a little icon right there. You're going to pop that and you could fire it off to Remexis Cloud. Um, or you could just export the STLs or apply files and fire them off to your lab and whatever HIPAA compliant um, software that you want to do that. The workflow for true abutment is the same for all laboratories, okay? So it doesn't matter whether you're scanning ELO scan bodies, true abutment scan bodies, IO flow, you're working with true abutment or Atlantis or any lab on planet Earth, it's the same. Um, you could make these types of impressions. So writing a little note here and that's it guys, super easy. Um, I hope this helps clarify how to scan scan bodies in Romexis with Plancad Easy and Emerald 